So you're more of a classical liberal. You're not. Yes. A, you're not a shout people down or call no, them no, Nazis. No, 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 so no, I no, disagree with. You don't believe me to be a Nazi, correct? Uh, no, I'm just joking. So this is very rare. Like I would rather have a beer with you than probably like 90% <laughs> of my conservative friends because I think we'd actually learn something from each other. Oh, absolutely. Okay, time for a bonus edition of Change My Mind. In our latest installment, we pushed back against the increasingly accepted narrative that Thanksgiving is a racist holiday. And it really did lead to some great, productive, rational conversations that you can watch by clicking the video above. Which reminds me, with all of these Change My Mind videos, I haven't taken the time to ask you, have you used these techniques, the Socratic method? And what kind of results have you seen? Have you had any conversations with people that maybe surprised you, were productive, were rational? Let me know in the comments below. As always, however, we did have those who were less enthused about the mere idea of us being there. Oh, the origins definitely, uh, that's a little skewed. Be thankful and everything, but like the origins of Thanksgiving, like that's not something to celebrate. More or less kind of founded upon genocide, slavery. I think you people have worms in your brains. <laughs> Elaborate. Period. Worms are eating them, so you cannot think. Whiteness is a cancer and parasitic to society. Wait, what is I a cancer? What is cancer? <laughs> Wait, what? White people. White people are cancer? Yeah, as a well, I'm a, do you think Thanksgiving is racist? I'm in Do you think Thanksgiving is racist? I do, and it is. White people are cancer, and I hope you all die. It's sad when they don't sit down. You never know who you miss. You never know who you miss, which is why I wanted to set this conversation with Phil, a self-identified classical liberal, aside as its own video to show you just how great a conversation reaching across the aisle can be. What's your name, sir? Phil. Phil, nice to meet you, nice Phil. Nice to meet you. All right, I don't know if you're familiar. Do you want to wear the hat? I will wear the hat. You will? I will. Give it up for Phil wearing the hat. <laughs> you got a big noggin. I have a big head, too. Yeah. Do, you, do you have a hard time finding hats? Yeah, it was very rough as a child. That so. one size fits all is bullshit. Isn't it's it? so bullshit, dude. I had the same thing. I had a pair of Goosebumps boxers as a kid. I don't oh, know yeah, if yeah. You, maybe you're too young. Do you remember I'm Goosebumps? Familiar. Oh yes. So sir. the book came with a pair of glow in the dark boxers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a fat little kid. It wasn't one size fits all at all. Rough, yeah. Also huge pecker. So mm. um, <laughs> that was the real problem. Yeah. Uh, what was your name again, sir? Phil. Phil. Okay, Stephen. Sorry. I, single syllable names are hard for me. So I don't know if you're familiar at all with the show. What we do. I'm somewhat some, uh, familiar. Okay. So uh, today we've been talking about this. I'm sure you've obviously heard some of the controversy. It happens yes. with Columbus yes. Day, course, and a yes. lot of people want to remove Thanksgiving. No, of course. From even the list of nationally recognized holidays yes. because they believe it's racist. Um, I do not believe that's the case. I think Thanksgiving is a wonderful holiday. I think it's arguably the most inclusive holiday that we have. Gotcha. Has done me good, will do me good. God bless it. That's an Ebenezer Scrooge line from his little nephew there. <laughs> uh, and uh, happy Thanksgiving to you. Before we get Thank to changing my mind, what are you most thankful for? I am probably most thankful for my wonderful mother. She oh. did a lot for me growing up. Yeah. And she was a single, uh, single mother for a long time. And then oh. you know, she got a wife. So yeah, she's a lesbian. Which okay. is Yeah. But uh, she, you know, she definitely did well for now, what she, she was had. she a lesbian when you were young? She was actually bi, so she married my father. Okay. And then they got divorced, so then she found herself a very wonderful wife. And did she always know she was lesbian? No, she did not. So well, she found it out later. Well, she's bi, so. Okay. Did so, she yeah. always know she was bi? No, she did not. So. So was it, was it, I'm only curious because was it after the divorce where she yes, then it was. realized, it like, was. experimented? And, mm -hmm. Wow. It was. I knew a guy who uh, was married and then she left and she became a lesbian. And oh, I'll tell you wow. this, he was devastated. It was hard to know because you know there's a lot of sort of internalization. Mm, yeah, I don't of know course, of you, course. But he thought like, what did I do wrong? Exactly. Yeah. It just turned out she was a lesbian. Yeah, yeah. You know, you didn't do anything wrong. Okay. Sorry, we've gone off on a tangent. No, this okay. is what happens when I've been sitting down for hours. I bet. I bet. Uh, and this hit my hat's a little too tight again because of the one size fits all. So, what do you disagree with here on the premise? And how do you uh, like to change I do my mind? agree that it isn't racist, but I feel that Thanksgiving is uh, very much more ignorant, and I would say it isn't inclusive, though we tried to be inclusive. Okay. That's my side of the argument. How so? Uh, first off, I'd like to say that. Uh, of course, this was all around, you know, 1617, 1621, but Thanksgiving actually didn't become an, a national holiday until about 1863 from Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. But this comes very much after, say, the 1830, the Indian Removal Act, and basically our deep history with Native Americans. And of course, they, we, they've had their, uh, you know, the wars and the conflicts between them, but we've also had their, our conflicts with them. Right. But then, so I just feel that when we gla like gloss over that kind of stuff, when we just make it a national holiday, years afterward, and then what do I think of when I go back to my say my elementary school days? I just remember being in the cafeteria where half the class is dressed up as pilgrims and half of us are dressed up as Native Americans, and we don't really learn anything about it. We just see we sort of just hold hands and sing kumbaya, right. and then it's just I just feel that it's though it may not be racist the. Uh, I'd say that the background that comes with it is very much unexplained, especially at an early age, and that I shouldn't. I say that it shouldn't be canceled as a national holiday, but I feel that the awareness of the people is very low than what it should, probably should be. Okay. Um, 
Well, I actually appreciate that. Now, see, I was raised in, in Canada. And gotcha. Canadian Thanksgiving is silly. It's not really a real thing. <laughs> uh, it was in October, but I'm sure, as you know, it seems like your history buff. You remember George Washington wanted to recognize it as a holiday, yes, I think October 4th, Absolutely. and Jefferson didn't want to celebrate it. Mm -hmm. And when you said, actually, that you were going to go to the fact that it wasn't an actual holiday, I thought you were going to go to what's often taught in schools, you know, the, uh, the Winthorpe letters, where um, yeah, there's right. a war with mm -hmm. Pequots, mm -hmm. and people try to conflate that sometimes and say, well, look, he had thanks. It's like, well, that was Thanksgiving for victory in battle. It, yes, was in it wasn't right. at all the same. Mm -hmm. So we both do agree that it was the 1621 initial feast yes, gathering. Well, absolutely. And that mm -hmm. Abraham Lincoln was recognizing that as a symbol of unity. Right, yes. Yes. Okay, so we both agree on that. And I want to be very clear. I don't disagree on anything else that you presented Perfect. regarding the uh, native... Well, I would say Indian's removal, but Native American native removal. Right, 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 exactly. like, one thing, this is a good example. I can't... If I say my favorite Richard Pryor album is, I can't say it. I can't say the <laughs> N-word in his album. Like, So we can't even talk about... The Indian Removal Act. Right, exactly. I have to say Native American Removal Act. Anyway, so if I offend you, or let's just assume that no, we no, get no. the wrong words here. Gotcha. Um, now, that being said, uh, being from Canada, I only learned about the evil, uh, the evils of colonialists. Gotcha. And um, most people who sat down, who sit down today with me, said that's what they've learned here. As a matter of gotcha. fact, none of them were aware of a lot of the barbaric practices from Native Americans. Uh, not a single one knew that they hadn't domesticated horses. Not a was, single one knew that they didn't right. use the wheel. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, right, you watch the Disney film, you see, uh, uh, well, Pocahontas or any, you see right. them on horseback culture, right, with the yes, bow and arrow, almost yes, every yes. painting that we see. As a matter of fact, I think it was at HuffPo where they were saying it's time to change Columbus Day to an Indigenous Peoples Day, right. and it showed a Native American on, on a, a horse, horse with a bow right. and arrow. Um, so I see much more inf misinformation going the other way. Gotcha. Um, but I do think that it's important to delineate between the fact that we are celebrating Thanksgiving a very specific moment in time where they feasted together and they relied on each other, mm. right? The, uh, uh, the the natives and uh, and I'm not I'm going to butcher the name, but the Wampa Wampa uh, Wampa yeah, Wampa Noag. Wampa Noag is how I think it. But someone else corrected me and said it was like Wampa Noag, and I was like, oh crap, I've been saying it wrong. There you go. But the early uh, the early settlers and the Wampa Noags, um, they lived peacefully and it was for 50 years. And I think that's a good thing. And I think it's a good thing that Abraham Lincoln, even after all of the misdeeds that were committed. And I think some of them are misunderstood. Um, that it was a good thing to try and create a unifying holiday for people to be thankful in the United right. States. Uh, and I think the danger in what we see, and I don't think that you're suggesting this, but saying, okay, yes, this was a good holiday, but bad things happened afterward, therefore we need to attach this to the holiday, sets so a really bad precedent because you would have to do it with every single holiday. Right. So that's where I'm feeling. So like, you're absolutely right that people do connect it, but I feel that the reason that we do that is just because we're so misinformed. So I feel that what I've been seeing is that one side says like, yeah, of course we had the barbaric stuff, and then like you were saying, I, I was hearing you when I was over there, you were saying like, well, they did awful stuff to each other, and we basically just subjugated, and then that helped other tribes, and et cetera, et cetera, and it's like, and you're right, but I feel that. And I hope you understood you heard that I was saying, I certainly wasn't saying that we are uh, Western Europeans no, are blameless no, 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 absolutely, at all. No, right, yeah. exactly, but it's just like, the fact that we did these kind of things, and then when, so I feel that when we have one side that doesn't connect it at all. We just feel like we just have the unitary, like, yeah, we're all friends for 50 years, blah, blah, blah. Right. And then the other side, it's like, no, they're absolutely 100% connected. And it's like, that's just not true. But I feel that there should be sort of like, I guess a 50-50, where we have one side that's willing to say like, though Thanksgiving is not a racist holiday, it definitely should be something that's more based around, not say awareness, but more just historical context. Like, yeah, we did have a peace with them, but we also have to identify what we also did to them. While the other side should say like, Yes, we had a lot of war with them, but we also did have a peacetime. And then something like Thanksgiving is a, actually one of the greatest times for U.S. history, in my opinion. Oh, okay. Well, good. So you agree on that that specific date, Thanksgiving, is one of the greatest. Yeah, 1621. Right. The reason why I feel like it's so, contra uh, so con controversial is that there's actually no written history of an invitation straight to the tribe as well. Uh, hold so on a second. I'm going to correct you. That is semantics because we actually have not only written documentation, we have the list of attendees. But we have we the list of attendees yeah, right. of the settlers. Now, yeah. for the same reason that we have a basically a written contract of the purchase, I talked about this earlier, of Manhattan for 60 guilders, right. Native Americans didn't keep records. So, so even the though issue. there was no official invitation, they wouldn't have been able to sign on it anyway. Exactly. But there is there are plenty of records that they were there. Put it this way. Do you, do either one of us dispute that Native Americans feasted with those settlers? I do not dispute that. Okay, so that's kind but of a semantics just, game, but... For me, it would just be like how it appeared. Did Was an official invitation sent out, or was it just more of like they just walked in and they were welcome? So it's just, well, I mean, I, I, that's what I, that's where uh, my... From what I is. understand, and it seems like you might know more about the history than, than I do here, there were um, in, in celebratory sort of like warning shots using their armaments, mm. and so what happened was like, hey, what's going on? And then they realized that they actually were just celebrating. Exactly. And then at that point, they decided to celebrate together and feast. So it wasn't necessarily planned, 
like a formal dinner invite. Gotcha. But there was concern, mm -hmm. right? They were leery, obviously. They're going, who are these new people in the new world? And then they feasted together. I don't know if you've read that. I've but, read some parts of it. Yes. yes. So, um, and, and I do, and I appreciate that you're being straightforward about that because you'll have a lot of professors who say, well, there's no written invitation, therefore it didn't happen. I there's mean, so much document. There's, there's not there's a written invitation. saying that to, they were there. And, right. So, yeah. And so list of attendees. It's more of like, even though they're not, but might, might not be 100% evidence, it's likely, most right. likely, 99%. Well, what, what's your uh, ancestry yourself? What are you? I am half Filipino, then half white. So you're half Filipino, Italian half Italian and Polish. And you know, you could go either way. Right, right exactly. Filipino, that's what my guy, or uh, is he quarter black Garrett? People think he's Mexican all the time. Yeah, exactly. Like, right. His dad looks really black, yeah, and then he exactly. looks really white. Mm. Uh, but sometimes people think he's Mexican. But the reason I say it is because let's say, and I think sometimes we overcomplicate history, and this isn't even. This is, I think this is one of those interesting discussions to me, but I know no one else is going to be interested in this, so we can just talk I think about it's this. A wonderful discussion. Um, let's say I'm trying to think. Let's say right now you had uh, some kind of a gathering. Let's say we had a gathering, right? Of course. And. People came from, I'm trying to think of some kind of a tribe uh, that maybe has been untouched by the modern world. Um, whatever it is, let's say people came in with very, very complicated, from, let's say yeah. people from Dagestan, gotcha, right, gotcha, in yeah, Russia, yeah, right? Yeah. And there's no way we could pronounce their names and they weren't able to read or write. Gotcha. Right? And we're going, okay, so we had a dinner, so um, Phil? I yes. said, Phil is here, yes. Stephen is here, and the guy goes, you're so, so slimy and leave it ish. And you're like, I don't, uh, I don't, and he goes, sign. And he goes, I don't know how to sign. And you go, all right, we're going to mark that down as one. Gotcha. So they had the names of the settlers, and they had a general attendance record gotcha. of how many natives were there. But mm -hmm. let me ask you, like, how would you... This is something I often think about. Well, I go, well, hold on, let's think about that logically. How would you mark it down if you didn't speak their language, you couldn't pronounce their name, and they couldn't read or write? For me, I would just do sort of descriptions. Yeah. So that's what I would probably Description do. Description and a line, if number. You, if you had a plenty, of, plenty of paper, it'd be like, tall guy, color hair, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this is going to sound paper, like racist, but let's be honest, that to the settlers, they looked yeah. very similar. Right, exactly. They were generally the same height, black hair, yeah, exactly. brown eyes. So it would just so, be the same description right, exactly. 40 times. Let's so, well, like Filipinos. You know, if I go into a Filipino restaurant, right, and they go, okay, I want you to write down for police sketch artists, <laughs> exactly. every person here, and it could just be because I'm white, I would go like, all right, uh, relatively short, athletic build, exactly. brown hair, Darker it'd skin, be, be a very brown eyes. Be a very <laughs> so I would just write down eh, 16 Filipino guys. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and I think sometimes people take this sort of uh, absence of specific evidence to uh, then, and you have professors, which is really irresponsible, using that as evidence of absence that it happened. And I the get preponderance that. of evidence, it seems like we both agree on no, this. Of course. Um, which I appreciate. But For me, when I look at absence of evidence, I just like it to leave it, I wouldn't say. I like to leave it open, I guess you could say. Right. I'd say like I would look at the more likely cause, and I would assume that the, more, the most likely reason would be the correct reason, right. and until other evidence would appear. Right. Uh, but when I, when I just have that absence of evidence, I just look at it as what more, what's more likely. And, and I, I think that do. that happens a lot when you look at Native American history with their relationship with, early, uh, with the early settlers. I mean, not only do they not speak the same language, not only do they not communicate the same way, but the way they viewed women, the way they viewed nature, the way they viewed property were very, very different. Oh, absolutely. And so sometimes people go, well, they tried to steal this land. They go, well, hold on a second. What, if they just wanted to steal the land and they had guns and horses, It'd be easy. why didn't they just steal their land? Why did they pay so much, and we have records of shipfuls, right, being given, they obviously were under the impression that they were purchasing this land, but when you're purchasing land from someone who doesn't understand the concept of purchasing, land purchasing, right. and they come back in, you're like, it'd be like you buying a house from me, me selling it to you, mm -hmm. but me thinking it's a lease, and then me walking in on your house two years from now, I'm like, okay, I'm coming back, and you shoot me, I'm like, what the hell, you're like, yeah, I don't exactly, remember right, you. Exactly. A lot of that happened with those early relationships, and unfortunately, in academia, it's chalked up to genocide or racism. So that's, and that's what, a problem. Well, the reason why I would associate, I wouldn't say genocide, but like mass murdering. The right. reason I would associate it is just because when it became a national holiday, because when you said it at 1863, because they say if it was, I don't know, 1700, say if that became a national, not even 1700, 1787, when we first made, right. when we first got the uh, Constitution signed, say if that same day we made Thanksgiving a national holiday, makes sense to me. But the fact that it came after the removal acts after wounded knee after these right. huge conflicts that resulted in just basically us being i wouldn't say unscathed but basically untouched while we left them and well i would disagree with that maybe this is something that uh because i was doing quite a bit of research on this so do you know how many of the natives were actually wiped out as far as an estimate gosh i mean i know it's less than what people assume it's about it's about 50 percent but do you know how many of the settlers are estimated to have been wiped out during those wars it's a higher amount. 30%. There you go. So if you think about it, like at that point, you can look at the 
Indians Removals Act, sorry, the Native American Removals Act and go like, well, just because they hated them, or you can also look at it and go, well, hold on a second, even though it was a one-sided war, no, at that, at that, at that point, by the way, they had guns. Especially with the uh, the raids that they did on Detroit right. back in the day. Yes. Uh, a lot of Native American names in Detroit sometimes where you just like, well, what is this? You'll have like O'Connell next to like Massapequa. You know, like, yeah, oh, it's exactly. just this weird blend. But um, I think it's important to note that, yeah, a lot of people don't realize that because genocide, I was talking with a lady here uh, who was a Jewish lady. Mm -hmm. It was genocide. Well, how many SS, how many Gestapo, how many Nazi officers were killed by Jews who were in German camps? Maybe a couple of them like accidentally knocked over a, an armoire and killed them, but certainly not 30%. Um, these were wars that went both ways, and by the way... So what would your definition of mass genocide be? Just wondering. Yeah, mass genocide would be the proactive uh, effort, approach, setting out to eliminate a people based on particularly by uh, race, creed, or religion. Okay. And I don't think that happened. By that definition, then no, it did not. Because right. if you talk about Indian Removal Act or Native American Removal Act, technically it wasn't elimination, it was just push. Right. It was push. just getting them out of the way. And, and again, some of that goes back to disputes over sort of land rights as well. But it, it, to oversimplify the, this idea that we came in and just said, we're pushing you out. Mm -hmm. Well, hold on a second, that doesn't really, you can't really juxtapose that with the idea that we're really the first nation to create reservations where they have particular rights that nobody else does, where they can have casinos or not necessarily pay the same in taxes. Um, like that doesn't, it doesn't really kind of jive with what people think the Indians removal act. Doesn't mean that it was right. No, of course. But I think that, I think, let me ask you this, because I'm curious since you're a reasoned person and I think it's a productive discussion. You, you go to UT. I do, yes sir. How much of this do you think people are taught in classrooms? My, my, I would um, presuppose, especially based on my experience here, that most kids learn of the evil of colonialist settlers and that there was this peaceful horseback Native American culture and that we came, conquered it, and committed mass genocide. How much of that is taught versus what we're talking about right now? Would you, by your estimation, totally opinion, speculation here no, at school? No, of course. <sighs> if you're talking more of just like, because of course not everyone is a history major or right. something related to that subject. If you're talking about just basic classes to get uh, requirements done, I'd say probably about 90, 90 to 95%. Okay. But then when you take those history-based classes where it's specific for a major, then you'll, you'll start seeing these histories. I was very fortunate uh, as through middle school actually, I had a Texas history teacher. Okay. And what he, his, Honestly, his class was the hardest class I've ever taken in my life. Harder than classes I'm taking now. Because he made you rationalize your position and absolutely. everything. Yeah, so I had to teach you for like me, that I'm, I'm liberal leaning. When it comes to this stuff, I would love to see, I wouldn't, I wouldn't eliminate the holiday, but I would love to see more, just more history, I guess, to be more exposed. So you're more of a classical liberal. You're not, yes. you're not a shout people down or call them no, no, Nazis. No, 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 so no, I disagree with. You but, don't believe me to be a Nazi, correct? Uh, no, I'm just joking. But, uh, no, yeah, no, but, I appreciate that. But I was very lucky because he would, he basically, even though we're Texas history, he started at the, at the year 811. Yeah. And then worked his way up. And then he would even talk about, you know. And were you born and raised in Texas? Yes, sir. Born and raised in Austin, actually. Oh, okay. So you know what? I think, I think you and I probably have a very similar story and that if you would have been raised in Canada, like you'd probably be a conservative. And maybe really? if I were raised in conservative Texas, I would have been more liberal for a season. I do believe that logically I would have come back to the right just because uh, I believe that it is the correct side as far as, you know, legislation. I believe, yeah. Uh, yeah exactly. You know, but exactly. I, think that, I think that having a teacher who taught you to think critically, and you were probably steeped in deeply Southern Christian conservative culture more so, thinking critically. Yeah, my family was very much not a Christian family very much because especially with her being a lesbian right we were, it wasn't a very good connection and then also my parents are also deaf so we've also both are deaf yes sir oh man so it was just a lot of like conflict with both with religion yeah. with ideas of curing and like so you were so, a smart guy who mm. thought critically and probably n n would, would it be fair to say naturally inclined toward a more contrarian point of view I would say so. Because that was me in Canada. Gotcha. And in Canada, uh, we don't have a conservative. Well, in Quebec anyway, we have liberals yeah. and liberal separatists. Yeah, right. And so I would sit there and I would learn about how bad America was. So I was just being taught about how evil the settlers were um, and how much more peaceful the founding of Canadian history was. And I'd be like, well, hold on a second. That's because you still have the queen on your money. They fought off the royalty. Right, like That's exactly. kind of a big yeah. deal. And so I do think there is a byproduct with, with intelligent people naturally going against the grain, taking the contrarian viewpoint um, which for you being raised in a more conservative Christian area, yeah, I was very it resulted in you, in you being more liberal, but a classical liberal, yes. which is probably yes, why sir. I'm more of a classical conservative in that I'm not, you know, like what people would call, uh, I don't even know what they call now, like alt-right or whatever it is. Right, exactly. Um, so this is very rare. 
Like, I would rather have a beer with you than probably like 90% <laughs> of my conservative friends because I think we'd actually learn something from each other. Oh, absolutely. That's, well, and your name was Phil? Yes, sir. All right, Phil. Well, thank you. This is probably going to go much. separate, not in the Thanksgiving thing because I think it was more, just more, this is that almost philosophizing. Right. Thank you, man. Hey, give it up for Phil. This is fantastic. <laughs> Man, I get that picture. Absolutely. I thought you were gonna take the picture at first. I would say after, because sometimes people take the picture and then like try, try and be no, wet, no. really. So I was like, I don't know you yet. So, all right, good. Thank, Thank you, you Phil. Much. Thanks, brother. God bless. <laughs> what a nice guy. Let him keep the turkey hat. All right, hey Phil. Do you want to keep the turkey hat? You promise you'll, you promise to cherish it and take it with you for all your days? Absolutely. All right, there you go, Phil. Thank you very much. Hey there, YouTube viewer. If you like this installment of Change My Mind, click on one of these other installments playing in a box. It's the only way you can find it because if you search it, it may not show up because it's controversial and, and YouTube wants to um, discourage that controversy to change my mind playing by the rules we just don't know what they are subscribe and hit notifications